Good morning, uh, 17th of October today, uh, another beautiful morning, it's mild. Yesterday morning we had a, our first frost, it was uh, minus one degree. I uh, put the heating on in both greenhouses, just very, very low, just enough to break the frost. Uh, but switched it off again and it hasn't been back on and the, the forecast ahead is quite good. So uh, it's been quite amazing when you think it's been an up and down year and you can definitely feel that climate change has taken control of the, the whole earth. Uh, seasons are all mixed up. Uh, I'm going to start off with just telling you this morning I watched Country File on the television and it was an absolutely brilliant program. If you didn't watch it this morning I would download it and take a look at it. It's basically looking into the future, taking technology way beyond what I ever imagined. Uh, I'm a bit of an old-fashioned gardener. I still like to do things the old way. Um, I'm not into hydroponics. Uh, I'm not into all the, the new growing techniques. But um, I do like to keep up with the times. But having said that, I am a bit old-fashioned. Um, I'm trying to go back to more or less organic gardening. Uh, which I've been trying to do over the last few years and I've got friends who are now on no dig, no chemicals at all, uh, top growers, all good growers and uh, we all realise the damage that we've done to the earth over the years. How, however, having said that, I'm still using peat based products um, but they're from Ireland, uh, the, the compost that I use is clover and it's uh, the peat's taken from non-scientific interest uh, bogs so you know that's okay. But I must say the program Country File was absolutely brilliant this morning. It showed lettuces growing in columns uh, up into the, into the eaves of the greenhouses. Absolutely amazing, pak choy, and it showed you tractors and everything with tractors and combines, no, <coughs> no drivers. <coughs> Some of the scenery is breathtaking. And then it also got on about biology uh, using seaweed and biostimulants, which I do use. Um, I will show you as the season goes on. However, this morning I'm down in the bottom greenhouse at the moment. A um, couple of weeks ago, I did mention that I was going to set some onion seed away, the, the heavyweights. And uh, I got a little text off uh, Nick Brick, who uh, obviously he's done the job with onions. He's shown an 18-pound onion at Harrogate two years ago. So you take notice of people like that. He recommended that I start on the 17th, which is today. So I am going to set some onion seed away today. I'm going to I've come down here for a riddle actually while I'm here I've started the video and I'll show you what's going on in this greenhouse uh, riddle a little bit compost and I'm going to set some onion seed away so that'll be up in the top greenhouse uh, we'll put the camera on hold and move up there uh, no, when I'm finished down here so thank you to Nick Brake for that uh, I've had quite a few questions people on about getting onions and setting them away in polytunnels and things uh, I must stress you do need a little bit of heat you need a little bit of bottom heat to get them germinated properly. Uh, you need to be able to keep a greenhouse frost free. And if you're looking to really grow the giants, the heavyweights, you do need a little bit of artificial light, which I will cover. I'll look at the artificial lights today, but um, we'll cover in greater depth as the, the nights start to cut in and the, the days, you know, we're getting no sunshine. It's pointless using uh, grow lights when we're having nice weather and the weather is still making plants grow. And as you can see by this greenhouse, everything is growing well. We're still setting leek heads. Uh, I've got quite a few here. I'll show you the, the heads which we've got steeping at the present moment. So much was set yesterday. But you can see them at different stages. I'll lift it down and we'll have a look. I have started a, a tiny few onions away and I set some pips away. They're up in the top greenhouse and we will show you, as I say, when we go up there. I'll lift this up down of its holster. This around right if we just look at the leaks you can see some have just been set uh, these have been done uh, about 10 days I would say and they're looking quite good I did that one on Friday thanks to Mick Cook that's Mick Cook's Blanche leak but it's um, tremendous intermediate and I'm actually growing it as an intermediate I did these yesterday and as you can see, tiny, tiny grass, which I will show you here. That's small, but it's beautiful and clean, lily white, tiny little pips on the bottom, and it'll make super plants. It's Marcus Powell's Blanche Leak. Uh, CSCs, I'm just busy setting CSCs at the moment. Uh, some of my blue, which were really, really large grass, they were off um, king pods that come up off the bottom. I've cut the grass down and I'm going to show you exactly what I'm talking about 
for cutting them down. Right, so that's the grass off a Blanche leak head. Um, very small, <clears throat> very fine. And there's the actual, some more heads ready to be set. <coughs> Looking very good. I've still got heads of uh, Cumbrian, which produce a lot. They give you lots of grass. I'll not set these, I've got those spare. So if anybody's watching and they do need some leaks to bulk their orders up, um, get in touch with me. Right, we've got this grass. Uh, I'll lift all of those out. As you can see, this is very large grass. It's steeping in um, a mixture solution of Rovril and water, a teaspoon of Rovril and a gallon of water. And I leave the head steeping in there for 24 hours. A lot of people use Domestus. I used to use Domestus and I, I was very happy with Domestus, I must be honest. Um, I think I've got a head outside. Yeah, the head here, which this is going to be tricky holding your camera and this is a Cumbrian Sammy Cross CSC as I call it right this grass is far too big so I'm going to actually chop it down to half the size difficult when I'm doing it with one hand and trying to hold the camera with the other but you get the gist um, basically I cut that down if you're leaving the full length they take a little bit of um, Standing up, the, oops, the grass is actually falling off it. Let's put it in. There we are, you can see the grass falling off. This is, there we are. This has been um, in the solution. And as you can see, the starting to peel off nicely there. So that head's bang ready to set. So we'll set that later on today. I still have um, leak heads to be taken and set. Uh, it just depends, you know, as and when I feel I have plenty, then we'll stop doing it and uh, we'll start cleaning out. I've yet to start all the cleaning out process. Uh, the, both greenhouses were cleaned out properly, but the polytunnels, uh, I've still got one to do. And then I've still got the main tunnels where the trenches are. So I'm going to put you on hold now and we'll go up into the top greenhouse and we'll resume when we get up there. Right, we're up in the top greenhouse now. This is the wooden greenhouse that's in the back garden. Uh, this is fully central heated, but I have it turned down to eight degrees Celsius. So all it does is basically keeps the frost out. It's never really hot in here. When the sun hits it, obviously the, the temperatures do rise. Uh, within the next three weeks, the sun will be too low in the sky and it'll dip behind my house. And I, I get very little sunshine over the winter months. But all plants are growing well, as you can see. Uh, we'll just take a quick look at some onions, which I've done in as a little tester. I uh, did these last um, Monday, so it's six days. It's Sunday of the day. Uh, six days ago, these were set. We'll have a look. Right, this is a heated bench, but I haven't got the heating switched on yet because uh, I've still got leaks on the bench. And I do, I do think uh, heating, for, for all it does, encourage root growth. If the roots hit the bottom, it does burn. So um, I tend not to leave anything on here too long. I usually wait until I'm on setting onions. Now I've got some pips. Um, I've got some small pips, onion pips off Chris Evans. They've been in six days and the very small ones have started to uh, sprout away as you can see. I've got some small ones from Mark Rayner and the very small ones again are shooting away nicely. The bigger ones, they're taking a little bit longer. Now. What I'm noticing, um, I may have to take a knife and just cut the tips off these because they were very, they're very solid pips and they are rooted. Uh, the, you know, you couldn't pull them out of the compost now, they've got roots on. Um, but the green maybe isn't able to push through. So as I say, I may have to just take the top off to let the green pop through on those. This is Mick, Mick Cook's onion. Uh, it was originally from Billy Lamb. Uh, Mick's grown it for, made it his own over the years. He's shown some tremendous onions, uh, beautiful quality, and he's also showing 15 pound onions out of them. I've had this for a number of years now. I've both got some seed and some bulbs from Mick, and I've seeded my own ever since. And as you can see, six days, and they are popping through all the way. This one, I got four bulbs off a friend last year. They were all 30 inches. And this was Joe Atherton's. Uh, not as good a shape as the Billy Lamb or the Mick Cook's onion, 
but a really big onion and a heavy onion. And I know Mick is always, uh, sorry, Joe's always very high up in the heavyweight classes. Um, it's usually him or um, Peter Glazebrook. Um, Nick Brake's not coming this far up the country, but he may do in the future. Anyhow, as you can see, again, these are popping through after six days. And I think that's the the cause of the bees that I bring in, the beehives. Uh, it does help them away. So they have been in six days and they are germinating. Uh, no heat anywhere really because the heating hasn't been on in this greenhouse. Uh, as I say, it is boilers from radiators underneath, as you can see. But the radiators only come on if the temperature dips. Right, we'll move along the benches. I'm just setting some onions now. Right, what we've done here, um, I've got two bays in here. This is just a homemade potting bench. This one's just a compost the way it comes out the bags. This one is riddled compost, and this is what I set the seed in. I just use a quarter riddle, as you can see, tiny little riddle. Uh, this is what, that riddle was full at the brim with compost and that's the roof that comes out of it now i don't mind the roof uh, a lot of people complain that they don't like this but to be honest i like open structured compost for my plants to grow in so that goes straight in with an ordinary bag of compost and as you can see that's just mixed in with my other compost it opens the compost up a little, little bit and i i certainly don't mind that at all now i usually keep it the rough stuff for setting my onion stock away, onion bulbs, uh, in another month, I'll be putting those back to seed. I also set stock plants in there. Um, and as I say, that's, I don't mind a bit of the, the coarse mix. Right, I have a little bench which fits on half. So that's for working on. Um, where are my trays? I'm just setting them in 12 packs. Right, we'll just fill that up with the nice fine seed compost which I've mixed. This is just um, general multi-purpose. It's clover. Just fill the trays up. And another. And this is the way I set mine every year. And basically just use the, the um, tray just to compress the compost. That leaves slight indentations for you to drop the seed into, as you can see there. Uh, once the seed is in, I will cover that with uh, vermiculite, which I have on hand as well. Right, this is the seed that I got from the Joatherton bulbs. I hope you can see I'm holding with one hand and setting with the other. Right, I tried to aim for five or six seeds in each porthole. It doesn't matter if there's a few more. These are fairly easy to prick out. Right, that's two trays of Joatherton seed. Um, right, very fine vermiculite, just a homemade scoop from a milk carton. And I spread this over the top.
There we have it. Two trays of Joathitons onions all set. Uh, I have some labels here. Right, make sure you label everything and also put the date of the setting date, the 17th. So just put a label in the end of each one. Two trays of Joathitons heavyweight, uh, sewn on the 17th of October. I have a water tray. I'll just put them in there and let them soak water up. You can do with being emptied and some clean water put in, but the, the um, sunshine gives you allergy on it. Right, I'll leave those in there for about 10 minutes, let them soak up. Um, you'll see the colour of the vermiculite change. And when it changes, the, the moisture has come right through. They'll be put up onto that top bench and checked daily for moisture content. But by watering like this, I'll probably find that I don't need to water for a few days. Unless, of course, the sun was shining very, very strong. Um, right, we'll just look at some, uh, this is the virus free leaks. These are off grass, <coughs> off my own heads. I still have some uh, plants coming from the laboratories, which are tissue cultured, merry stem cuttings. So these are all virus free that, was, that have only been set a week. These are some that's been done about three weeks. These are some of the products. I mentioned uh, the biology. I use BioLift on most of my stock and I use BioSim as a stimulant. And I try to be as uh, organic as possible. And these are the fungicides and uh, insecticides that I use. They're all bio-friendly. Uh, Primtal, RS is for red spider, WF is white fly and sap sucking insects, and FG is a fungal one for fungal spores. So I spray regularly with those. As you can see, stuff's looking okay. Uh, we'll take a quick look at the lighting. I've got these set up underneath here. These are three brand new leaks under here. One of them is a new Cumbrian, which I had as a seedling two years ago. Beautiful quality, um, slightly better than the Cumbrian. Uh, it was a seedling from a GSN. So as you'd expect, the quality is very good. It didn't have a brittle flag like its parent. It was more to the parent of the Cumbrian. Uh, it wasn't a big leak, it was only 14.7 around, but it was a superb length and superb in quality. So that's the first head that I've ever had from that. They're all grass. This is a friend of mine, Dennis, Dennis Nuttall, uh, DN1. This is a seedling he had last year. Again, I seen the seedling, it was beautiful. It was 18 and a half inches around. Um, very nice leak and I do think it'll do some damage this year so that's the head that we've got set and they're looking quite good they'll not be uh, long and they'll be ready to prick out a seedling you had the year before DN2 uh, another good seedling he grew it from grass last year and uh, unfortunately they were too big too soon um, <clears throat> they all split when he went on holiday and when he come back uh, they'd gone too long but we are going to try it again. It is another good leak. So we'll see the DN1 and DN2. So there's some nice ones to look forward to this year. <clears throat> Obviously, uh, I am going to grow some Betty Black for heavyweights. And I'll put those on lights. Now, since I've mentioned the lights, we'll just take a quick look at some of mine. <clears throat> this is a T5. And this is what most amateurs would grow with. Uh, it is a good light. It doesn't... It promotes growth, but it doesn't really force stuff on tremendously. It keeps the colour right in the uh, Cumbrian because of the virus. But uh, it is a good light and it's cheap to use and it's very easy to use. Now then, I've got those set up. If the weather changes and I need to just keep those ticking over nicely, I will put that light on for eight hours a day just to give those a little lift. At present, they've had no lights. Uh, nothing has. It's because the sun shines out most days. Moving along to the more modern lights. Uh, you maybe did see these at the back end of last year. There's a set of three here, a bank of three. Uh, these are Daylight Pro 660s. Uh, they are LED. They have full spectrum and they've got red diodes right down the centre. They have controls where we can run them from 25% uh, power to 100%. Now last year I did set some away. Um, we put some onion seedlings under it and I put them on 100% power and I actually burnt the seedlings so that may be a little bit strong for them at close range. This is now a meter from the plants and when I need to these will go on I will start off at 
and increase it if I need to increase the growth rate of the plants. As we can see, uh, we're in the process of potting plants on. These have just been done. They've just been done water last night, some blues. Uh, these were later set, still small. We'll move on to some bigger stuff, which was set um, probably about a month ago now. And they are flying because the weather conditions are great. Uh, we also have in here, this is a sodium, 600 watt, high pressure. And we also have metal halide, 600 watt. Uh, these are brilliant lights. The only trouble is very expensive and this year the way heating bills are going up uh, I would imagine I, well, I certainly don't want to use them. I hope they're not switched on at all this year But if I have an issue and plants aren't growing properly, they will be put on and they'll give the plants a little boost So that's it for today. Uh, any questions don't hesitate to give a call There we are. Uh, don't have, hesitate to give us a call I'll certainly keep you updated as to the germination of the uh, the seed that I'm setting and we'll see how plants are growing in a week or two's time. That's great now. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.